We're going to discuss the burner section of a hot water pressure washer. The particular one we're looking at right now is the RK43. This is a 12 volt burner system. The burner derives its power from the battery which is regenerated by the engine. Also part of the power for the control voltage for the burner comes from the engine actually running. So you've got a dual power source. Starting off here is your burner on off switch. It's a rocker switch with a built-in light. When the switch is depressed, this light will come on. That lets you know you have power. As I told you, the power, part of the power comes from this 12 volt battery. It's a 750 cold cranking amp battery. And part of it comes from over here. If you'll note, you have two yellow wires going into the voltage regulator. This is before the voltage is actually regulated and transformed to DC voltage. At this point, it is AC voltage and it should measure between 28 and 30 volts. Two wires are spliced into it that carries the voltage over to your burner control box over there where you have a rectifier and a relay. Moving around this side, you will see that box that we just discussed. Inside of this box is the rectifier which changes the AC voltage to DC and the relay which upon receiving a signal in the form of voltage closes and allows the power to power up your system. This is a Beckett burner. It uses a 12 volt motor. Actually I think this is a 13 and a half volt. For the sake of our discussion we call them all 12 volts but this is actually a 13 and a half volt motor. It utilizes a Beckett fuel pump, which is manufactured by Sunstrand to Beckett's specifications. It also has a built-in fuel solenoid in the pump. This is your igniter. To create a fire, you have to have air, fuel, and spark. Your air comes from your blower motor turning, which also turns your fuel pump that supplies the fuel, and the spark comes from your igniter. All these things have to be operating for any heat to come out of your burner. I'm not gonna try to educate you on the design and engineering factors of the burner. It's just enough for you to know these individual components so that you can troubleshoot and maintain. Your fuel tank, burner diesel tank, is your second tank over from where I'm standing. It'll have a cap on there that says diesel fuel. If you have any questions, if you think you got the caps reversed or anything, just look at these fuel lines and see which tank they run into. That's your diesel tank. This is your inlet line and this is your return line. If no other way, you can tell them by the fact that your inlet line runs through your filter. This filters the fuel prior to it going into your fuel tank. This is a water separator type fuel filter it's approximately a 20 micron filter and if you notice the amber colored bowl at the bottom is where your water separates. You can look in there and see water if it's actually in there and if you see it then all you need to do 
is unscrew this petcock and drain the water out. If you see a lot of uh, water reoccurring in there, you may want to take a look at draining your fuel tank and drying it out and replacing the fuel that's in it. Some of the things that cause water to get in your fuel <coughs> are condensation. Condensation is formed because your fuel tank isn't completely full. You have dead air space in there, and what happens is it gets warm during the day, then it cools off at night. As that air inside of that tank cools off, condensation is formed. You don't get a lot each time, but over a protracted period of time, it'll accumulate. Water being heavier than diesel fuel, the water will settle to the bottom of the tank. And as time goes on, it'll get higher and higher and higher until you've got so much in there that your fuel's no good anymore. Or as you drive down the road, it'll slosh around. So what you want to do is always try to top off your fuel tank in the evening. If you do that, there's very little dead air space left, therefore you can't accumulate much condensation. This filter should be replaced about every two months, regardless of how much time you put on that machine in those two months. If you run it 10 hours or if you run it 200 hours. The main thing is that you replace it because this filter will clog and if you get a lot of water in your fuel, this is a paper element type filter, very similar to, to some of your uh, oil filters, engine oil filters. Uh, what you need to do is change this about every two months or it'll clog up on you and shut you down. <coughs> 